I bought this white oak back in the spring from a small lumber mill out in the country and it's been sitting in my garage ever since. I brought it inside a few weeks ago to acclimate to my shop as I plan to use it on my next project. What I'm building today is a tall narrow side table, or maybe you'd call it a console table, or an entry table, or a hall table, or something else. In any case, it's a sort of a mission style table, and here's a look at the plans, and I agreed to make this for a charity auction. It's 32 inches long, 36 inches tall, 10 inches wide, there's a lower shelf, and there's square spindles at the ends. Now the lumber was air dried, so I checked the moisture content with this moisture meter before going too far along. I checked it in several spots and it was about 8%, which is fine. I first worked on making the top and the lower shelf as those pieces need to be glued up. So here I'm chopping some pieces down to size. Now the boards were a little bit cupped across the width, so I first ripped them in half on the bandsaw before I jointed and planed them to thickness. You know, we tend to minimize it in our videos, but you really spend a lot of time feeding wood into and out of a planer when you're making a big project. And here I'm cleaning up the sides on the plain pieces so that I can get ready for gluing them together. I picked out uh, three pieces that I thought looked really well together, and I, here I'm getting them set to be glued together for the top. Now sometimes I like to use dowels to help with alignment. Other people like to use biscuits, but this time I just, just use glue and I use some calls to keep everything lined up and uh, cleaning off some of the excess glue before it sets up too hard. And then the lower shelf was uh, put together just the same way. And then of course they were set aside to dry for a few hours and then I could take them out and clean off any remaining little bits of glue there. And then I ran the whole thing through the planer to just a couple of light passes to bring it down to a final thickness. So with the top and the shelf done, it was time to move on to the legs and the spindles. And it's a lot the same. You start with your rough stock and you plane it and joint it and all that. Now in these pieces I had to deal with a few small knots that were a little bit loose and so I mixed up some 5 minute epoxy as you can see here and then I dabbed that into the knots to uh, harden that up and make sure they wouldn't be coming out. Now this is only for small knots that are in less visible places. I generally tend to get rid of, cut, cut around any big pieces that have knots. And then yeah, here's a big stack of wood and there's a lot of jointing and planing ahead and maybe I should just hit the fast forward button on the video for a moment. With the stock all prepared, I could move on to the joinery. I'm using dowel joinery mostly, and I started with attaching the top and bottom cross pieces to the side legs. I had all the pieces laid out as they were going to go together so that I would not mix any of this up. The dowels are going into the face of the, of the legs instead of the edges, which is a little bit unusual, so I really wanted to make sure I didn't mess it up. And yeah, here I'm chamfering the bottoms of the legs before I move on to putting these together. Now I want to get back to the issue of knots for a moment. I had this one knot which you see right here in the middle of one of the long rails and at first I thought it would look okay and then I tried hiding it by cutting a round plug to replace the knot but in the end I decided it was just too ugly and had to go. With a table like this you can't be certain that it's going to be placed along a wall so I need both the front and the back had to look equally nice. Fortunately I still had some more white oak so it was back to cutting and joining and planing and well you know that routine by now. So the spindles. There's three spindles on each side and uh, I wanted them to sort of fit around the top and bottom rail. So here I'm cutting a notch on the top and the bottom of each spindle so that they will sit in. And you can see here where I'm fitting them into place, uh, test fitting them into place I should say. Now the spindles are going to be screwed into place and I don't have any black screws but you know I can fix that. And then it was time to do a lot of sanding before assembly and this is probably another good spot to hit the fast forward button. Uh, 
These are some metal table clips which I'm going to use to attach the top and therefore I need to cut a dado in the long rails. I'm using dowels to attach the long rails to the leg assemblies. There is no lower rails. The uh, bottom shelf serves as the structural support for connecting the leg assemblies at the bottom and, and there it just seemed to make more sense to use pocket holes for attaching the shelf to either end. These, will, these are way at the bottom of the, of the unit and they'll never be seen. So with four holes at the end of each rail and two rails, that's eight dowels at either end, 16 dowels total, that's a lot of gluing and tiny little quarter inch holes all at once, so things get a little bit hectic, but it works out. And with the top rails in place, then I can put the shelf in place. It, it's upside down here, so this is the bottom, and then they're being attached with some pocket hole screws. Now, for the finish, I wanted something a bit different. I tried a few test pieces and settled on using an ebony stain. Yes, I'm talking black. It's a bit startling at first, but once you wipe it on and wipe off the excess, a lot of the black color settles into the grain lines, and once the finish is on, it becomes a rich dark brown with black overtones that I think looks pretty cool. And speaking of the finish, we're at that point now. I brushed on three or four coats of polyurethane, water-based, with a light sanding in between. And yeah, sanding between the spindles is, yeah, that's a bit of a pain. The top had a few more coats for extra protection. And once it had dried for a few days, I buffed some paste furniture wax onto both shelves, which added some more protection and a lot of shine. And so it's just a matter of attaching the top to the base. I put the top upside down on a cloth to protect it from scratches and then I could flip the base upside down and then I use those table clips to attach the top to the base. And that's about it for this project. As always, thank you for watching. Please hit that like button, drop a question in the comment section below, and I'll try to answer as many as I can. And if you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing and you'll be automatically notified when my next project is finished. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.